getting that first position as a data engineer is always difficult. Whether you're switching positions from you know, data analyst to data engineer, or you're just jumping into your career, it can be a little bit confusing because there aren't any straightforward degrees that will get you to a data engineering position. So that pushes a lot of us to look into certifications. There are tons of certificates out there and almost every live that I do, or just in the comments of most of my other videos, someone asks me, what data engineering certificate should I get? Well, let me uh, answer that question quickly before digging in too much deeper into the Azure Data Engineering Certificate, that if you're going to pick your certificate, you should pick one of the big three cloud providers, which in this case is generally uh, Amazon, Microsoft, or Google. These three data engineering certificates, or in the case of AWS, the big data uh, certificate, all provide certifications in tools that are heavily utilized. AWS remains one of the leaders in overall market share for cloud providers, followed by Azure and then again, GCP. So picking one of these three certificates will make sure that you have skills that are involved in one of, again, the big three cloud providers. You wanna make sure that your skills are very relevant to your employer. So that's why I would pick one of these three. With that, um, since I've already done a review GCP, let's dig into Azure. Now, like GCP, Microsoft has put their certificate preparation program on Coursera, meaning you can access it for either free if you can figure out how to audit it or for $49 a month via their fee. And from there, you can start studying how to prepare for the data engineering certificate exam. And Microsoft also gives you a pretty good idea in terms of what to expect, like what you're gonna be asked or what type of questions you will be receiving in the exam. You can find it here in this PDF, which I'll also link below. And if you just scroll through it, you'll see things like, you know, be able to design a data lake solution in Azure. Um, also understand things like star schema, slowly chain dimensions, um, doing things like implementing compression and partitioning, as well as, you know, building uh, data pipelines, using Spark, using some stuff in Databricks. So it, it's a pretty broad range, but it's also pretty focused. I think one thing I appreciate about what they're expecting is it does seem to be very data engineering focused, well, both classically as well as more of a modern take. You know, they're not trying to say like, oh, don't even consider, you know, traditional um, data warehousing. And we're gonna take that into consideration. We're gonna take, you know, the concept of like data lake house solutions as well. And, and, and that way you get a broad understanding of data and where it's going in the future. Yes, it's gonna be all in Microsoft tools, but at the end of the day, I, I think you get a little bit of a healthier um, view of all of data engineering. Now, if we jump over to Coursera and check out the preparation program, for the 203 exam, what you'll see as you kind of scroll through is, is very similar to the GCP, which is it will take you about, in this case, it says 12 months with two hours a week of studying to basically go through all this work. My guess is you can probably do that in the third of the time, you know, with like eight hours or 10 hours a week. Um, but I, I get that they're probably trying to make this for people who are very busy and have other things to do with their, their lives. On top of this, they do expect you to have some experience with SQL or Python or Scala, just so that you're not coming into this completely, you know, unaware of what they're, they're going to teach you. Because what they're going to mostly focus on is less, again, on the whole Python and, and learning the basics. And they're already assuming you have the basics, you know, you, you know how to code, you know how to write SQL. Their goal is to teach you how to work in the Azure uh, environment and not how to go backwards and, and, and start from scratch. So if you need to do that, do that first. The overall specialization itself has 10 modules, starting with a very intro uh, course that's just going to kind of cover a lot of the basics, like what is Cosmos DB and a lot of other very high level concepts before digging into more specific classic kind of data engineering concepts, such as like data storage and, and different types of data storage solutions that Microsoft offers. Also, they're going to cover things like Azure Data Factory in their data integration section, as well as things like uh, Azure Synapse Analytics, which has this whole confusing thing with titles. So I think that section is very helpful just to understand at least kind of what each of these different components mean, because anyone who's been in the data industry for a while knows there was a little bit of a kerfuffle naming convention wise in terms of what <laughs> Azure Synapse Analytics was. So there, there's been a few changes in terms of like what we're referencing when we state that terminology. So I think that's great because it clarifies a lot of that, that uh, muckiness up. I really appreciated that they also had course five where they talked about classic kind of data warehousing as well as reference some of, some of the differences that modern data warehousing has offered, because again, it gives you that view of the whole spectrum of data warehousing housing, kind of where we've started, where we're going, rather than just saying, hey, just put everything in one big table. And they also cover things like Databricks, which I think is a great modern solution that is a useful skill for most people to have under their belt um, and just for you to be able to put on your resume because there are definitely a lot of companies that you either ask for like Databricks or Snowflake or or both, honestly. So I'm glad that they are also have a section for that. So really this whole kind of course, I think was pretty well
laid out in terms of what they covered, as well as how practical those skills are. And I think that's something I really appreciated um, in this overall certification. Now, digging into more specific sections, uh, specifically the data integration section, I really like that they went over classic data engineering and ETL development concepts, such as slowly changing dimensions, because there's just something to the fact that this is something we've been doing for a long time in the data space, and maybe we are changing um, some modeling down the line, but there are reasons that you know, we utilized these tools or best practices. Um, so I'm really happy to see people kind of explain what it is um, like Microsoft has. Also, uh, I think what I also really enjoyed about each of these kind of sections is they made sure to put test prep not just as like its own course, which they do have one just, you know, section 10 for this being test prep, but they also have at the end of each basically week test prep section. So that means you're going to get like actual questions that could be on the test because there's, there's again, a ton of different stuff. If you remember going through that PDF that could be covered in the certificate. So that was something I really enjoyed just going through these courses. Like, Hey, this is great that as I go through it, there's a little section here for test prep. So I can not just think about this at the end and be like, okay, am I ready for the test? But down at, at the end of each section, that's, there's a little place I can go and check that out. I also really enjoyed that they had a lot of like practical aspects of working in the industry kind of wrapped into this certificate program. For example, they talk about how you can version control with ADF and how you can actually integrate it uh, directly with GitHub. And I just think that's really helpful because it's not just teaching you again, how to build a pipeline. You know, that's pretty easy. Anyone can build up, you know, Python pipeline and Airflow or something like that, and then have no idea how to like work in production. So I like that they're giving you a taste of how you can actually not just think about how you do the work and how you, you know, solve the problem, but how do you actually now put it into operational existence? So I think there's something there where it feels like this was more of a practical um, certification uh, than some of the other certifications I've kind of walked through in the past. Again, they even cover things like alerts and other kind of very important practical aspects that makes it feel like they had like either a data engineer or data architect or a whole combination of people come together and put together this certification. Another section I really enjoyed was in the data warehousing section, which is where they actually went into digging how you can like optimize, analyze, and kind of tell where you need to kind of improve your overall like data workflows. Like, do you have skewed data sets and what is that? And, and how do you figure out where those exist? They even have a whole kind of section in reading about what could be the impact of picking the wrong kind of data type for a column. And to me, again, it just shows care. It shows that that again, they didn't just approach this from, hey, let's try to sell this solution, but like, let's help people understand really what are the best ways to operate the solution. So there's just a lot of little things that you'll kind of find as you're going through this course that really make you understand the whole underlying solution and not just, again, some over overarching um, concepts and things of that nature. They both kind of take it back to classic data engineering and data architecture, as well as help you understand how these tools work under the hood, how you can best optimize them and improve them. You know, what types of data types should you pick? All of these things that make a huge difference, especially once you start working on real big data problems. Um, they're trying to help you understand from the beginning or early on, why it's important to understand these little details. So I think that that's personally just great. It was something that made me really excited going through this whole um, course, and I think you'll really enjoy it as well. Ending with course 10, which is just kind of a bunch of recaps. It's kind of helpful. It's kind of nice to kind of reconnect things. But personally, I'd say it's better to take some notes um, going along and maybe write your own recaps that you can go over. Um, they're just a few minutes each, and they're not that in depth. They won't help you answer every question. The, the test prep is better, but I think um, the recaps are only kind of useful. Useful. I think one other thing I really enjoyed about this program is it was so purely a data engineering focused program. Um, you know, the GCP certification uh, in comparison focused also on the occasional machine learning and AI, which sure we can argue has a space in the ML ops section. But I, I think if you're really trying to dig into data engineering, your focus should likely be purely data engineering, you know, adding in ML AI at this stage, if you're just getting started is kind of extra fluff that isn't necessary. So I really enjoyed that this was very focused on optimizing workflows, building, you know, solid data warehousing uh, solutions, also, you know, building solid data pipelines, building alerts into those pipelines, and just thinking through um, the entire end to end life cycle of data, rather than again, oh, let's add all this extra fluff onto it. So overall, I really appreciate this this certificate. I feel like if you leave and, and finish with this, you will have a really good understanding of the whole Azure uh, workflow. In terms of like what I recommend it for people, obviously, I think there's an aspect of me that says, yes, of course, there are benefits to getting this, this certificate. You will have a much more in-depth and balanced view of how you can you know maximize how you utilize Azure. But if you think this is the only thing holding you back from getting a job, I think I want to give you a quick bit of perspective. 
let's say you put this on your resume. More than likely, this resume is gonna go into an ATS system that's gonna get ignored by people because you don't have the right amount of experience, you didn't go to the right school, um, or something like that, which are all things that some of these systems are, are set up to filter you out for. So just assuming that adding the certificate to your resume will get you an interview, especially if you have no experience, is kind of hard. You need to partner this certificate with maybe join a community uh, that's also working on this certificate and start networking with all the people because maybe one of them gets a job before you and they can offer you an opportunity there. Also start looking for opportunities to network, you know, through LinkedIn and other ways that people that you know, again, it's best if you do it through, you know, first level connections, because then when you hand someone your resume, then they'll actually look at it and see that certificate. If you just put it into an ATS system, Again, these are not filtered to see like, did you get the right certificate? At least not often. Usually they're more focused on years of experience with certain tools. Um, again, sometimes if you're from a feeder school. And so as much as it's nice to think that you're gonna put this on your resume and then someone's gonna look at it. I mean, as someone who's done plenty of interviews, we generally don't look at your resume unless you pass you know, our round. So it's arguably more important to make sure you have like networks and different people you can go to or different groups you can kind of join that could maybe possibly lead to a more direct job or referral because that's a better way of ensuring that someone actually visually sees your resume and then sees the certificate. So it's not one or the other. You're not just going to get this certificate and then immediately get a ton of interviews. In more likely case, you're going to have to get uh, this certificate and then get your resume in front of actual people and not just automated systems. That's my overall view of the Azure Data Certificate, as well as just certificates in general. Hopefully that's helpful to you guys. I will see you guys next time and thanks and goodbye.